All right, so this is Christian and I'm here with Lucas, which uh, I helped a few months ago to land his first uh, web developer job. And yeah, he's here to share his story, uh, how I helped him and uh, what he's doing now, what he did before. Uh, yeah, hey Lucas, how are you going, man? Oh, I'm doing pretty good. Yeah. Enjoying, very... uh, enjoying the winter in Canada. Oh yeah, yeah. it's always a good time. You look very cool. Actually, because yeah, because of the move, um, everything's relatively packed up, but because of the job you helped me get, now I can move to where I want to be, um, which coincidentally is also very cold, but it's, uh, it's in the mountains and I'll be super happy there. You should move south, man. You should move south, definitely. I want to move to... Great now is a dangerous place. <laughs> yeah, I guess so, if you are in, uh, in the Americas. Uh, this summer, I'm going to move to Croatia, then uh, I'm going to move to Russia. Let's see how things go. Um, I want to ask you, where were you when we started working together? What were you doing and what was your situation? Like, how were you learning to code? Or... All right. So I was working at a locksmith shop, mm -hmm. um, taking apart locks and putting them back together, cutting keys, mindlessly stamping keys with the logo of the lock shop, uh, genuinely feeling uh, like, like unfulfilled. Like it, whenever I would come up with a new idea because I was the low guy in the totem pole, they would usually just shove it aside. And I, I felt like I didn't have a say in what I was doing and I wasn't very inspired with it. So I began to learn to code and I would code on the weekends every once in a while. But for the most part, it didn't feel concrete. It wasn't like something that I looked at as a real possibility. I was like, just study hard and become a real locksmith. That's what your destiny is. And then I just continued to code on the side and I was reaching out, trying to find help in one of the Facebook groups. And then you reached out to me and uh, we started talking. You helped me out with the problem that I was having. And then you brought up that you were a coach. Uh -huh. And that's kind of when I decided that I wasn't going to be a locksmith for the rest of my life. And I was going to live something that I really wanted to. And it kind of expanded what I thought was a possibility. Yeah, I can totally relate with uh, your story. You're basically a program, right? And uh, my story is very similar. I was in the coffee shop, as you know, and I was uh, working with others that were 30 or something like that. And that was I'm saying this all the time, but I was wondering if I'm going to do this thing forever till I'll be 30 or 40, I'm going to be replaced by a robot uh, in five years from now. So yeah, it's um, when you're doing like mindless work, you don't feel um, appreciated, I guess. I think that's uh, like there is more out there, but you can't. It sounds cheesy. But uh, that's my experience. Uh, that's what I felt. And that's why I decided myself to learn to code. And uh, what, from what resources were you learning to code? Or what was your approach to learning programming before we met? Um, so I started out, I just Googled um, how to become a front-end programmer. And they were like, you need to know the following languages. And then they listed off the main three. And I was like, whoa, I need to learn three different programming languages in order to even have a shot at this. Like, Which ones? Uh, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. <laughs> OK, OK. But HTML and CSS, they are not programming languages. Yeah, they're really not. But I, I was a noob. I didn't know. <laughs> I was just like, holy smokes, I got to learn all of this stuff if I even have it, like, to even have a chance. And like that really, like it got to me. And I was like, this is a really hard uphill battle that I'm going to have to face here. And uh, yeah, kind of lost my train of thought. What else were we going with there? Uh, I will ask you what, uh, what resources were you using or what were you doing to learn programming? Oh yeah, so I then took that information. I was like, okay, I need to learn these three languages. Where can I learn it? And I looked at Free Code Camp and I looked at Code Academy. Those were the two that I was kind of dancing around with now. Um, I wound up going with Code Academy just because I liked their setup a little more. The UI was a little bit more friendly and it made a lot more sense in my eyes. So I started to go with them. Uh, then I completed all of it. And I still knew nothing. I followed everything. I had all the information in my head, but there was no connection between all of it. I didn't have a process. And... 
at that point, I was like, okay, I guess I need to start to learn React now because that's the next thing. I've learned the three languages. That's step one. Yeah. The crop and the crow shop, right? You were doing a project with a crown shop or something like that? Yeah, crown clothing was the yeah. was yeah. the project that was made in the Udemy course that I originally took up. Mm -hmm. Um like really like set me off and started getting me towards React. Mm -hmm. And that did a little bit better job explaining some of the key details because it's literally someone like just talking to you in the ear the whole time. Uh, so I finished that and I actually had a Facebook memory the other day and it was like me broadcasting to the world that I had finished this. So I finished it up and I'm like, okay, now what? And then that's kind of where you started talking to me and you were like, it's time to make a project. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I'm curious, I want to ask you because uh, this is a very individual kind of thing, right? When, when did you make like that connection between knowledge and applying the knowledge, you know, because for everyone is different. Uh, what was your, not necessarily my help, but what was your aha moment when you realized that you can apply some of the things that you've learned to a real world kind of uh, project or situation, if, if I can say. I'd have to say it was the first few projects you gave me just, because uh, I told you, in that beginning interview, I was like, I honestly feel more comfortable in React than I do in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And that set off an alert in your head and you just spoke your mind right away. You were like, you must feel more comfortable with the simple languages than React. If you're devoting all of your time to that, you don't have enough base knowledge to get to where you need to be. So you pulled me back and you made me get a way more broad understanding of HTML and CSS specifically. Because JavaScript I was doing fairly well with, but the other two I kind of dismissed because I saw on forums that they're not real programming languages, so I don't need to know it. Yeah. Um, and you snapped me right out of it. And the first time I really felt like I knew what I was doing was when I made that BMI calculator. One of the first apps, I think. I think. Yeah. I didn't make it with React. I made it with vanilla JavaScript. In CodePen. And CSS. And I made it in one night. And it was a fury of copy and just all the swear words. Uh, but I pumped it out and I handed it over to you. And then you were actually impressed. And up until that point, like you were not mincing your words. You weren't saying, oh, well, this is good because of this. You were like, that's bad. You need to get better. It was the honesty that really caught me. Um, so yeah, that's kind of like. I wanna, I wanna add to that. Nothing feels like your first project. You know. Yeah. Um, I don't remember which one was my first project. I think I was. I did a um, credit card validator, or something like that. I, I remember you sending it to me, and you made me copy it. <laughs> did I? I don't remember. But like the, it was just the form, like I didn't have any of the background stuff, but you were like, yeah, you need to copy this. This is your first one. And yeah, that you got Reverse fun. engineer it. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Okay. And uh, where are you now? How is your life right now after you got your uh, first dev job? First dev job, went through phases. Like, obviously, when you get the job, you think, I don't belong here. Like, I'm a self-taught developer. Like why should I get this job compared to somebody who went to school and spent four years to get a degree? And I quickly found out the answer to that when I spoke to somebody who just went through four years at school about building web pages. Now, granted, they had a little bit more of a broad knowledge of computer science in general, but when it came down to producing what the, uh, the employer wanted us to build, um, they would come to me and they would ask questions or like I would just outright have to explain to them everything that was going on. Um, so that was kind of a point where I realized that practical knowledge was very important. And then as I continued to work for the company, um, I started to build up a larger repertoire of React skills. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I started to learn drag and drop. That was a big one. Now I'm working with rich text editors like CK Editor. Um, the what you see is what you get editors. There's a lot of different things to call it. 
and it's really nice from like just a programming perspective first um just being able to expand what you're doing and really feel like you have an idea of what's going on and it was actually like up until the point where i had to learn drag and drop it felt like it was getting a little stale mm -hmm. like i already know this all you're asking me to do is like make a new page put button here put text here blah 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 and then i finally got challenged to learn something new afterwards and that's kind of where i learned that this job always keeps you on your toes and you need to continue to learn new things and the thrill of that learning and the accomplishment you get when you make it happen that little buzz that you get after you get it like it. that never that never loses potency that never uh just has like a dimin diminishing return like a drug would or anything like that it's just always that good yeah all the time and from like a personal perspective, uh, I got the job at the perfect time because like three days after I got my first paycheck, my, uh, my computer blue screen. And luckily, I had already ordered my new laptop with the money that I got from my first paycheck. And I wound up getting it like the day after my computer blue screen and it just saved the day for me. Perfect. Uh, the increase in capital is always nice. Like you can do more with it. Like now I'm getting into investing, which is fun. I'm really starting to feel like an adult that has like all of their stuff together, which is fun. Um, the freedom that the capital allows you to have is also very nice. The fact that I don't have to go to an office every day. I mean, nobody has to right now, but I'm setting myself up to always stay that way. So that even when all the restrictions die down and you kind of begin to move forward with your life, I can just get in a van and drive to the Grand Canyon if I wanted to. And I can do a full day's work just glancing at the Grand Canyon every once in a while. Like that is feasible for me. And that's something that you can only get through a certain type of job. And web dev is obviously one of the bigger ones there. Yeah. I want to emphasize that what you said about uh, that thrill when you solve a problem or when you... Uh, because I have the same thing, right? Sometimes I'm going through like one or two months where I'm like, oh, this is boring. I I know exactly what I'm doing. And then you have one of those problems when you throw your AirPods mm -hmm. and uh, you just go crazy because you can't fix the issue. Maybe there's a bug or maybe there's a new feature. And then once you solve it, you think you are the, you are God, you know, again. <laughs> you know, And it's, it's addicting, you know, somehow. Yeah, I... I can totally relate to that. And that actually just happened to me like uh, last week. So I, it's fresh in my, in, in my mind. Okay. Um, what did you like the most about the program or about working with me? Well, coming from a large construction background, I learned pretty early on that I was, I'm very receptive to like almost a drill sergeant type of atmosphere, like yell or not really yell, but being honest instead of like trying to preserve feelings and just telling you right off the bat hey this is what you need to do and what you're doing right now is not good enough to reach that point the fact that you were honest with me and the fact that when i had an issue you were always like i would send you a message and within two hours i'd have you on the line and you would help me now i'm not sure if that's something that you do now that you've grown a little bit more but um yeah, that was something that I really liked. You were almost like a spotter, like when you're doing like bench press or whatever, and like you're just having difficulty with one portion. Like maybe like you're just with the last you had a syntax, Yeah, you had a syntax error and you couldn't quite like it was stopping you from learning like the real thing you were trying to learn. You'd be like, oh, just do that. And then you'd snap your fingers and it would all be okay again. And then not only did you do that, but you also took the time to explain why it was happening. And that's really something that uh, I got a lot of value out of. And that's Very something nice. that like, I just couldn't get from like school or from any of the online courses. I prefer, um, I prefer the same thing done to me as well. You know, I prefer someone to tell me when something is, is wrong, you know, uh, being nice is okay, but um, getting the results, it's better, you know? And uh, yeah. obviously we work together so you can, reach one goal to become a developer not to uh play games you know so 
it has to be done. But I remember we had like two or three weeks when you went left and right, and then I had to pull you back in. Yeah. Or was it like kind of in the middle? I think we were discussing the layout of your app or something like that. Yeah. Um, like in general, like you were telling me, like I thought I could design. Mm. And you were like, no, you can't design. Just take a general concept and kind of roll with it, copy what other people are doing, and then add a splash of what you want in there. Um, and you definitely played the role that I'm now seeing as the product manager when I was building the app. You were like, do this, then do that. And you gave me crap if I started building something I wasn't supposed to build. And that definitely helped me when I was moving forward because when I got my first job, it wasn't just make this app good or make this app. It was build this. We yeah. want this next. And you working to keep me on track and teaching me about that early on helped me later on. I keep saying this um, actually. So when you are by yourself, you actually, you need to be a junior developer, a senior developer, a designer, uh, project manager, business owner, you know, you need to be all these things. And that's why probably it's overwhelming for most people because you, you, even if you get the knowledge, you don't have the experience to apply the knowledge, you know? So I guess that's one of the biggest um, points that I make with, uh, with my program, you know? And um, one epiphany that you had while working with me? Epiphany? Um, connecting JavaScript to HTML and CSS mm -hmm. was the biggest epiphany I had with you. And that's where everything began to connect. That was when like, the concept was finally plugged in and I understood it. Um, just like click this button, activate this JavaScript function. Yes, but that JavaScript function could render another piece of HTML. So all of a sudden I could click a button and make a pop-up appear. And that right there was game changing for me. I was like, okay, I can do this for a bunch of different stuff. I can make everything kind of appear. Like hit a button, call an API, get a bunch of information, put it on the page. Yeah. And then once you can do stuff like that, that's where you start to become useful to an employer. And you helping me, like guiding me towards the right direction there was definitely the biggest attempt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you, uh, the, the biggest thing is you don't see how um, these things are connecting, right? And they don't make sense separate, you know? But if you have like, if you know what they are supposed to do, then it's gonna become easier for you to learn because you need to solve a problem and then you reverse engineer and then you get to the point where you need to learn what an event listener is and all these things right mm -hmm. and uh, okay misconceptions do you need to be a designer to become a front-end developer i am not a designer i am not artistically inclined in any fashion whatsoever i cannot test you that. do not need it maths math not really. I haven't used math really at all. Like when, when I use math, I use JavaScript to do the math for me. Got it. And uh, do you need a certificate? I think you said no. no. And do you need to be a full stack to become a web developer? In no, don't go for full stack. No. All right. So <laughs> I guess uh, don't go for full stack. And if you want similar results uh, as uh, Lucas here, just feel free to either apply for a consultation call or send me a DM on Facebook. Cheers.